Okay, so here is the second model. Uh, in this uh, model, we have still single consumer and then um, uh, two consumption good, but this time one of the consumption good is the input itself. I mean, related to the input. And so the labor is the input, all right? So here's the model specific assumptions and then the problem specific assumptions. So two consumption good, good X, and then the second good is leisure. Leisure is basically what's left, um, uh, what's left, um, uh, left from uh, labor. So you have uh, a limited number of hours, so in endowment, and then you put some labor. So your endowment minus labor is the leisure that you can consume and enjoy. So uh, that's what leisure is. This is how we calculate it. So we have one consumer with the utility function X. So it depends on X. So more X is higher utility. And obviously leisure and labor are negatively related. So more labor means less utility. Consumer is endowed with a fixed amount of uh, labor. Uh, we're going to normalize it to one. Uh, in this uh, numerical example, it's also one. So one is the endowment. L is the amount of labor. It's, I mean, think about this one as like 24 hours. So working with one is easier than 24. So for that reason, we normalize it to 24, all right? Rather than, um, I'm sorry, we normalize it to one rather than uh, 24. Um, so production function. So the firm is going to produce this consumption good X by using only one input. Well, obviously we can sort of look at two input scenario, but it's gonna be more complicated. So what's the point? So let's stick to one input case uh, in this model. So the X amount of production depends on uh, the labor. And so this is the production function. And usually the production function is a concave function. So if this is labor, if this is X, so it has to be some concave function. So this is decreasing to returns to scale technology. It could be a linear. It would mean a constant returns to scale technology. It can't be convex because it means increasing returns to scale technology. There is no such technology yet. And I think there will never be. Um, I guess, I mean, I don't know, let's not speculate. But so this is some production function. And then, uh, so the question we will be answering is, oh, uh, W is the price for labor, so it's wage. P is the price for good X. So in general equilibrium, what would be, uh, what would be the, um, uh, the, the price ratio? Once again, the firm, uh, I, I forgot to put it, firm is owned by, uh, the consumer, all right? So once again, we are going to, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this. The production is costly because the input now, so the costly, because the inputs you use are, are sold in the market, the labor with a wage W. So therefore you have to pay that price to hire a, a labor. So it's costly therefore. Uh, there's no additional endowment on good X. There's only a fixed amount of endowment for good, uh, good. The, the, I'm sorry, the labor. And the firm is owned by the consumer. So the consumer's uh, problem is normally utility of XL subject to X equals F of L, right? Uh, but we're not solving this problem. We are solving... By the way, solving this problem or solving the general equilibrium problem would would mean the same thing, all right? Uh, but we are trying to find the general equilibrium solution, meaning we need to find the general equilibrium price ratio. Because once we have more realistic model, we're, we're with, with two consumers, it's going to make more sense to talk about prices so that these consumers can exchange the goods through prices. Here, obviously, it makes no sense because this is just single consumer. So you can just directly solve this. Uh, maybe I should, well, if I have time, uh, I can try to solve this and, and, and see if the results are the same or not. But, you know, they should be the same. Um, okay. So here's the numerical example. Uh, so the numerical specific examples, uh, assumptions. The utility function, x times 1 minus l. As I said, the more x gives me more utility, but the labor is, is subtracting from my time. 
so the leisure is decreases with le uh, labor so i enjoy leisure but i don't enjoy i dislike labor all right so this is x times one minus l so in some sense this is leisure this is good x so it's a cobb douglas utility function the production function is squared of l so it's nice concave function so it's decreasing returns to scale again what is the price ratio in competitive equilibrium well Remember, I'm going to keep repeating this again and again because it's really, really, really important. Even if you change the model specific assumptions, those three steps will never change. Okay, don't forget that. So for that reason, let me repeat it. Uh, the, the, the price ratio should be such that the firm is, is finding its optimal supply, meaning the firm maximizes its profit given the technology constraint. And then the consumers should... Uh, demand optimally, meaning they should maximize their utilities subject to their budget constraints. And then third, those prices should be such that there's no excess demand, there's no excess supply. So the market, market's clear. All right, so I'm going to start with step one, uh, the firm's problem, right? The firm's problem. The firm's problem is to maximize profit subject to technology. What is the profit? Well, once again, uh, oh, okay. So here, um, what are the consumption goods? Well, there are two consumption goods, the leisure and then the uh, uh, good X. Well, the, the firm is produces only one of those consumption goods, right? It produces only X. The firm cannot produce leisure, all right? So firm cannot produce leisure i mean you so the leisure is one minus labor okay but as a firm i cannot produce more leisure so only thing that i can produce as a firm is x so therefore i only sell x so therefore uh what i will have is if i'm talking about revenue it's going to be x times p uh, the price of uh, good X is just P. So this is how much revenue I'm going to make by my production. Because again, I'm only producing X. So this is my revenue. What is my cost? Well, my cost is uh, the cost of labor. So I hire L many hours of labor and pay W dollars per hour. And so this is my uh, cost. So the revenue minus cost is my profit. That's it. Subject to the budget, uh, not budget constraint, I'm sorry, the production function, x is equal to f of l, remember? Um, so x, the amount of good x I can produce is equal to squared of l, all right? So this is the optimization problem of the firm. Uh, well, what do I choose? Well, I choose x and l, so how many labor and how many output that I like to produce. So I am producing, supplying X and demanding L, right? If I'm firm, I demand labor. The consumers will supply labor. So I would like to choose them so that I maximize this thing subject to the constraint. How do I do that? Uh, use the substitution method. So how am I gonna do that? Well, you know what? Take the square of this both sides. So L is gonna be equal to X squared. So whenever you see L, just plug x squared. So my maximization problem is going to be maximize uh, x times p minus wx squared. So all I'm choosing is x uh, and no longer have any constraint. So what does that mean? The first order condition, I mean, you take the derivative with respect to x, set it equal to zero and solve for it. So it's going to be p minus 2wx equals zero and hence x equals p divided by 2w. All right. Very good. So this is how much supply of good X uh, as a firm I'm going to uh, offer. Well, given that, how much labor I'm going to demand? Uh, X squared, which is P squared divided by 4W squared. And this is the demand, right? If I'm the firm, I demand the labor. I don't supply the labor. So be careful about the uh, uh, sort of the uh, 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 notations there. Because it's it's going to matter when I am in step three, when I equate supply and demands. Like you should be clear about who is supplying, who is demanding here, because we have only one consumer and one firm. 
it's not a big deal maybe, but if I have two consumers, it may get a bit more uh, uh, confusing, all right? So be careful about that. So um, that's it. This is the firm's problem. And this time, let's not forget, what is the firm's profit? The firm's profit is this thing where X and the uh, L are optimally uh, chosen. So X is chosen by this. So it's going to be P times this. So it's P squared divided by 2W plus, oh, minus, I'm sorry, uh, W times L. So the L is this. So it's going to be P squared. So minus P squared divided by 4W squared, but multiplied with W. So the W will cancel out. So P squared divided by 4W. So therefore, if you do this subtraction, pi is equal to P squared divided by 4W. All right, this is the profit. And as you see, it doesn't depend on L, it doesn't depend on X. So I can just leave it as pi, as a constant, um, un until unless I need to open up that pi statement. Okay? Good. Now I'm in step two, the consumer's utility maximization problem. So maximize utility, uh, which is equal to, uh, remember, x times 1 minus L, um, subject to, so I choose not only x, but also L, uh, subject to the budget constraint. So the budget constraint for the consumer is what? Always, expenditure equals income. So the expenditure, I, I spend money on buying <clears throat> good x. So x times px, how much money I'm going to spend. The question is, do I pay anything to buy leisure uh, or labor? No, I'm a consumer. I don't pay for labor. I'm paid for labor. So therefore, um, it's income, not an expenditure. So the expenditure is that's it, x times px equals to income. Well, first of all, because I own the company, I have the pi plus... Uh, w times L. Remember, I'm a worker and I worked L many hours. And so therefore, W times L is how much money I get uh, from this uh, labor uh, sal salary. So this is the budget constraint. Um, so the question is, uh, what is this optimization problem? Well, simple. Just leave X alone. Pi plus WL divided by PX. All right. So whenever you see X in the utility function, just plug this thing. So the maximize X, which is pi plus WL divided by PX times 1 minus L. Okay. So maximize this by choosing L. Uh, there's no constraint. If you like, you can write this as just distribute this over 1 minus L. So it's going to be pi plus WL divided by PX minus uh, this time, uh, this thing times L. So pi L uh, plus WL squared divided by PX. The minus is here, okay? So you don't have to distribute it here. So this is the profit function. And so the first order condition means you take the derivative of that thing with respect to L and set it equal to zero and solve for it. So if you take the derivative of this thing, it's W over PX minus, if you take the derivative of this thing with respect to L, it's going to be pi over a pi plus two WL over PX has to be equal to zero. So as you see, what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find L. So I have uh, w equals pi plus 2 WL. So remember, this minus is in front of this whole thing. So be careful about that. So it's W minus pi divided by 2 W is what L is. So this is L supply. So this is how much labor the worker, the consumer will supply. And I'm not going to find the supply, uh, I'm sorry, the demand, uh, right? Because you're consumer, so you demand. So what is XD? I don't know. I don't care because I don't need uh, for step three. All right. So in step three, I'm going to clear the market for labor because I know the supply for labor. I already know the demand for labor. They have to be equal. The market for labor should clear. And from this, I'm going to find P divided by W ratio. That ratio will also clear the supply and demand for uh, good X. So I'm going to skip that. I mean, I'm not going to calculate the demand for X. 
because it's just extra calculation that I really don't need. So finally, step three, uh, the demand for labor, uh, the supply for labor, a labor must be equal to supply, a demand for labor. So the labor market clears. The demand for labor is P squared divided by 4W squared. And then the demand, a supply for labor is W minus pi. All right. Oh, I didn't erase it. So pi is this fellow. Uh, P squared divided by 4W divided by 2W. All right. So I have to solve this. I mean, I have to find the PW ratio. That's what I mean by solving this. Uh, do some simplification. 2W, 2W. All right. So this and 4W squared cancels out. I'm left with 2W. Okay. So here, multiply to do the cross product. So I'm going to have 2W squared minus uh, P squared. The W and W cancels. And, and I'm going to have 2 equals P squared times 1. All right. So therefore, um, 2W squared equals to send this to the right hand side. So it's going to be plus. So it's going to be 3P squared divided by 2. So what do I have? I have 4 divided by 3 equals P squared divided by W squared. Take the square root of both sides. It means PW ratio is equal to 2 divided by square root of 3. Or the WP ratio is square root of 3 divided by 2. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's just a reverse. Okay? But because I was writing W over P, so it's this. That's it. Uh, well, therefore, the total number of good X, which is going to be supplied and demanded, is, is P over W divided by 2. All right? So, therefore, it's 1 over square root of 3. And then the labor, the total demand and the supply for labor, is the square of this thing, which is 4 over 3, uh, divided by 4. So, it's 1 over 3. Okay? So, this is... Uh, what the equilibrium allocation will be. And this is what the equilibrium price ratio will be. Okay, I hope that was clear.